Why are you here? Because I told her. Told her everything. Ah. And now you are free? Yeah, so no more threats. No more of your requests. You and me, we're done. Did you ever think I truly held you? You're more of a fool than I thought. What truly held you was you. And let me show you why. I once held the galaxy by the throat as you once held her by the throat and let her die slowly and your emotion at that point is what you fear I can unlock that part of you anytime I wish it is a simple thing the human mind once it feels something strongly it becomes etched in the memory the subconscious shall I show you that part of you that hungered to kill Jedi, that took pleasure from it? Or perhaps you will continue to listen to my counsel, and I shall ignore your pathetic attempts at freedom. Now leave me, murderer. I have nothing further to say to one such as you. Grenades? I didn't think Jedi used grenades. Well, I don't like to use them unless they're C5 concussion spheres or the Mersan cryoban pellets. 
Sonic screamers aren't too bad either, just don't use them on a Bith. It makes their head explode like a melon. And don't do it to a Celestine either. It makes their ears bleed and they gibber twice as fast. All right, all right, keep your robes on. Here you go. Talk. About what? Why, you trying to be my mother? No thanks. Already had one. Somewhere. No thanks. I didn't need friends on Narshada, and I don't need them now. Go ahead and ask. Look, before we get into a game of Guess the Pazak card, pull back on the throttle. I don't know you that well to start sharing our life stories. Talk. About what? Sure, very easy. That's why I dress like this. When they're looking down to check you out, you can usually smash them on the base of the skull or deliver an uppercut that knocks them flat. It's simple. When you want a man, you jab him with a Bothan stunner, then while he's screaming in pain, slap some stun cuffs on him. Then starve him for two or three days until he becomes open to suggestion, then double check his bounty and see if he's worth anything. Call it what you want. Me? I love my targets. Go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling, being trapped in the ship. Everything's... everything's just too quiet. I'd rather be doing something, somewhere with people, activity, some life. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been off-planet. Guess I got used to it. Well, Narshada may be one of the biggest cesspits in the galaxy, but it's got a life to it. Activity, aliens, people, refugees. It's like noise, but relaxing. Like the hum of a hyperdrive. No arguments here. Still, as long as you accept it, the place isn't so bad. Better than sitting here, in silence. Yeah? Hm. Didn't think I'd hear a Jedi ever refer to Narshada like that. Yeah, something wrong? Go ahead and ask. Look, before we get into a... Talk... Why, you trying... Hanhar's only a bounty hunter because that's the closest word for what he does. He's not out for credits. It's more vicious than that. And it runs a lot deeper. It's like he's out to make the whole galaxy suffer. Every living thing in it. He wants to break them, ruin them. And when they can't suffer anymore, he wants them dead. I didn't kill him once. Biggest mistake ever. That's a long story. I don't want to get into it. Maybe some other time. Go ahead and ask. I've killed people before, but not if I don't have to. I know. It's different. I don't know why. I don't know. I... I haven't killed anyone for a long time. But when I'm around you, suddenly it's like I've always been doing it. It's like a reflex. I don't like it. And I don't know when or why it became so easy. Go ahead and ask. Look, before... Go ahead. I've killed people. Oh, do I? Is that it? How you could ever possibly hope to understand is beyond me. Jedi don't have family. I know what happened at Malachor 5, and I know Jedi didn't care about life there. Get away from me. The next time you come and ask me a question, I swear I'll shoot you in the head and dump you out the airlock. Yes, is there something you have come to offer me? The fact we are even having a conversation is gratitude. Usually, my conversations do not have the give and take that our current interaction does. And, of course, there is much more screaming on the part of the listener when the torture field is activated. I am willing to indulge some of your questions. There are several factors, all of which affect each other. There is the stabilization of Dantooine, the preservation of the restoration efforts on Telos, the political resolution on Onderon, and the unification of a religious power base in the galaxy, either Jedi or Sith. The destruction of my yacht and of all my activities on Nar Shaddaa carry a cost that would take you several lifetimes to pay back. 
But perhaps the offer of credits will spur you to act quicker, more decisively. I am not unsympathetic to such greed. For every system you stabilize, I will reward you for your efforts. Compassion and mercy only erode respect and power. There is the stability. Dantooine is a vital resupply point for the Republic. If its stability is compromised, then the Republic will lose control over many outlying worlds, and they will become a haven for raiders and smugglers. The economic loss from such outer worlds is greater than the Republic is aware of. If the matter is not corrected, then it shall fall. Onderon is an outer rim world, rich in ecological resources. Its aggressive ecology is capable of bringing devastated worlds back to life. It is currently experiencing a political schism split between two forces. One must triumph for the planet to be stabilized. Telos is instrumental to the stability of the Republic. Its success or failure will dictate the economic forecasts of many other worlds. Of course, since the destruction of the Paragas facility, the odds of the Telos restoration project being successfully completed is close to zero. I hope you do not decide that the next thing that must be destroyed to stop the Sith is the galaxy itself. Perhaps one must ask themselves at what point defending your religious ideals is advantageous to the Republic as a whole. As long as your defense does not exterminate more than 50% of those you intend to help, is that acceptable? I heard you making friends with the bounty hunter. I don't blame you. She's a scrapper. You don't survive on Nar Shadda for very long if you aren't. I've known people like her, maybe without the rocket launchers, but sort of the same. Maybe without the plunging neckline and the boots. I wouldn't let anything she says bother you. It's a wonder you cracked her attitude at all. She's cold as the ship's hull. All right, what did you want to know? Something up? What do you want now? Whatever, don't worry about it. It's just a sore subject with me. Yeah, well, they're dead. That's how that story ends. But not everybody's story has to end with losing their family or their loved ones. And not all the bounty hunting I do is for criminals or killers. There's a lot of lost people out there. Scattered ever since the Mandalorian Wars. And sometimes, it's like you can almost hear them. Like an echo calling out for each other. And maybe, just maybe by finding them, I can start putting the galaxy back together. Maybe. We'll see. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. But you're not getting anything else out of me. Yeah, something wrong? Go ahead and ask. Yeah, more or less. I wasn't born there, I just ended up there. Well, the war happened. The first one, against the Mandalorians. And family right up until the end. It's not really a new story, you hear it all over the galaxy. It's what happens after the wars are over that you don't hear much about. I think so. After Revan crushed the Mandalorians, planets throughout the Republic were flooded with refugees. 
I was just one of the others. Me? I got passage to Narshada. From there, not much you can do, so I became a bounty hunter. Take a guess, Jedi. Only two groups of people would have lost family at Malachor. And Jedi don't have families. As much as any slave becomes a Mandalorian, they took prisoners on every world they conquered to bolster their ranks. And they took a lot of worlds. When I was young, yeah. They mostly used me to carry ammo packs and munitions. Toward the end of the war, they needed everyone they could get. They taught me to fight, to hunt, to survive. I was part of their squad, even when I was young. Everyone served as part of the unit, and I, I felt like I had a place there. After Malachor, it really didn't matter anymore. The Mandalorians lost. Bad. But you know that. Yeah, I know. I saw the worlds they left behind them during the war. That kind of stays with you, I haven't forgotten it. What happened at Malachor, they... They probably deserved it. Should I be? Maybe I should ask you if you're happy about all the Jedi who died on Malachor V. Maybe it felt like you lost family there, but I doubt it. Yeah, I know. I saw the worlds they left behind them during the war. That kind of stays with you, I haven't forgotten. Yeah, something wrong? Go ahead, Mask. I didn't kill him once. Biggest mistake ever. Do you really want to hear this? Well, Hanhar and me go way back, in the worst possible way. He's from some forest planet on the Outer Rim where Zerka had set up one of their slaving operations. I don't remember the name. It's something with too many K's and Y's. It sounds like you're gargling Ronto spit when you say it. No idea. He's just... Hanhar. I hope there aren't any more like him. I get the impression he's not a good representative of his people, though. He's the equivalent of a mad calf hound among Rontos. Some of Voga the Het's men said Hanhar killed his own tribe, but those two crud thugs lie every time they open their mouths, so who knows? Well, not for long. Once off planet, Hanhar escaped from the Zerka slavers, then killed them all. I don't know. I always thought he just liked using them as weapons. Well, before you get too proud of him, Hanhar figured Zerka had the right idea. I don't think he understood the concept of slavery before, at least on the scale that Zerka practiced it. But now he did. You ever hear of Dursan III, or the ID Cluster Colonies? Right. That's because Hanhar happened. He makes what happened to his homeworld look like an exercise in community building. He's not a bounty hunter. He's a slaver. A predator. It's like he's out to enslave or kill every human in the galaxy, like he's trying to settle some huge score or debt. I don't get it, but he's dangerous. Anyone who paid credits. And sometimes, he just hunted humans for sport. The ones who survived, he sold to the exchange, to the huts, to anyone who'd buy bodies, living or dead. He and Voga used to do big credit transactions. That hut really liked the look of unwrinkled humans for some reason. Didn't make him too popular with the other huts, let me tell you. I was prey. And not only did I escape, but I saved his life while doing it. He's been hunting me ever since. I don't pretend to understand it, but among his people, they have these codes of honor. But somewhere along the line, Hanhar's got twisted. His people form these things called life debts. If you save the life of one of them, they pledge themselves to you. Well, with Hanhar, he can't escape that life debt. It's bred into him. But he hates every other living thing in the galaxy, so pledging himself to someone else, especially a human, was unbearable. So when I saved his life, it was the worst thing I could do. It was like slavery all over again, but it was in his head. It was like it pushed him over the edge. A life debt to Hanhar is a death sentence. He'll hunt you until you're dead. When I saved his life, it meant he had to kill me. And so he kept chasing me in hopes I would die. I think the fact I showed him mercy after hating humans for so long, that was something he couldn't stand. Probably. But if he had multiple life debts, especially to humans, Hanhar would probably go mad. He was angry before, sure, but he'd be ten times worse if that happened. Hanhar's tough. Really tough. And when he loses it, it's like nothing can stop him. I've seen him shrug off blaster bolts, balls, and stunners, and even survive a freighter crash on Dursan 3. He keeps coming. Yeah, tell me about it. Like I said, I get the impression a life debt's supposed to be a gift. But to Hanhar, it's more like a curse to both people involved. 
Oh, I'm glad he's gone. It's like a weight off my shoulders. I don't have to keep watching my back every minute, wondering when he's going to show up. And he always did. It's like he always knew where I was. Trust me, if he was still alive, he'd be chasing us even now, waiting to ambush us when we least expect it. And he always shows up at the worst possible time. He was one of the best bounty hunters on Nar Shaddaa. Anhar never gives up on his prey. Or his life debts. He's a hunter. He's a natural predator. Well, as happens on Nar Shaddaa, I made someone mad. Mad enough for them to send Hanhar after me. Turns out they were even able to get him cheap. He heard about me and wanted to hunt me down, for sport. He didn't think I'd be much of a challenge. <laughs> well, he tried to box me down in vents beneath the Nar Shaddaa docks, and he'd, he'd set one too many proximity mines to cover the escape routes. I think he'd hoped to drive me into the mines and then let them do the work. Or that I'd be too scared to try and walk through them. Thing is, I knew Hanhar's supplier, and the trigger signatures for the mines. It was pretty easy to broadcast a signal to blind their sensor receptors for a minute or two. I figured that would buy me enough time to move through them and get away. No, it isn't. I spent most of my childhood hauling mines and munitions. I got to know my way around them. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be here right now. Like I said, I disarmed the trigger fuses for enough of the mines to get by, temporarily. And Hanhar was pretty fast on my trail. I just made it to safety when he hit the first one. The blast leveled the entire ventilation section, and Hanhar was caught right in the middle. And he survived. Barely. He was crawling around, blinded from the flash and the plasma burns. And it happened so fast. And all the blood had been scabbed and crusted from the flash. I had the drop on him, and even blind, he knew it. He could still hear me. My ears were ringing from the blast, but I, I could hear him. I think he was begging me to let him live. His voice, it wasn't a roar, more like an echo of it. I suppose I should have killed him, but I couldn't do it. He was in pain, he was helpless. So I dragged him out of there enough to get him to safety, and he kept hunting me ever since. He said he'd pursue me to the edge of the galaxy. No matter where I ran, he would find me and break me, that I would always be prey. Maybe. I've thought about that moment, a lot. Wondered if I would do things differently if I had another chance. Yeah, something wrong? Go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling, being trapped in the ship. Everything's... everything's just too quiet. I'd rather be doing something. Yeah, it's been a while. Well, Nar Shaddaa, maybe it's got a life to it. Yeah, well, I wouldn't go that far. I'll believe it when I see it. Maybe one day, I'll let you. Alright, but I doubt you're gonna show me anything I don't already know. And when you show me, don't act like a tourist. It attracts predators. Good, good.
Yeah, something wrong. We're good to go. What's wrong? Why are you stopping? No, I don't believe in the Force. It's Jedi tricks, sleight of hand. This I'd like to see. It's not gonna hurt, is it? Feel the currents here on Nashada, the ebb of life. A simple kindness can be given to another. This is the Force, and all our choices, from the greatest to the smallest, affect each other, and the echoes travel. I can feel this... planet. I can't shut it out. It's louder now, it hurts. All these people... That's what I want. I'm sure of it more than anything. I want to become like you. I want to be strong. I don't want to be afraid or alone anymore. I, I, I want to keep running and looking and never feel like I'm finding what I'm looking for. I am tired of being hunted. When the galaxy takes something from me, I want the power to let go. And I want the power to heal the echo when it's gone. That sounds all right from where I'm standing. Thank you. 
I hear you. 